Hello, this is Seth Wilson, IT Administrator for East Texas Lighthouse for the Blind. I also teach AppCam. In this video, I'll give you an overview of Bookshare's Read2Go app for the iPad. This app also runs on the iPhone and iPod Touch. Now, in order to use Bookshare's Read2Go app and get a large number of books, you'll need to first register with Bookshare. And you can do this by going to the web and going to bookshare.org. There you'll find all the application materials. You'll need to submit proof of disability. And if you want to waive the $25 setup fee and $50 annual fee, you will need to also provide proof of studentship, both of which are pretty easy to document. And you can email or fax them in to Bookshare. And they're usually fairly responsive in setting up your account. Once you've got your account set up, you then need to download the read to go app on the App Store. Now, unfortunately, this app is not cheap as far as apps go. It is $19.99. Now, I will say that in my opinion, it's worth every penny. So just look at the upfront cost as a great way to get free books, many of which are current New York Times bestsellers. So I've just gone into the App Store, typed in read, the number two, and the word go. And here is the app here. Because I already have it installed, all I'm presented with is open. Normally in that place you would see the price, $19.99, and you'd be offered to purchase it there. Once you've got the app installed and open it, I've already configured mine so it opens directly to my bookshelf. But if this were your first time, you would be prompted to go through a series of settings. settings. Now you'll hear the app talk, and this isn't talking in voiceover, this is the app's native speech. You can change the voice if you'd like, but I think the default voice sounds pretty good. Now you will still need to use voiceover if you're totally blind just to find these elements, but in terms of the app reading and speaking to you, you don't need voiceover installed at all. The first thing you'll need to do is sign into your account. Now since I've already signed in, there's a sign out option here at the bottom instead. Once you've done that, you can set up a wide range of options to make your reading experience better. If you're totally blind and will be using the voice features exclusively, you may want to go into audio oh, and, thanks for interrupting, go into the audio settings and adjust your voice pitch. Now, here's something that's important that you may want to turn on. If you don't turn on the background playback option and you close the app, the app will stop reading to you. If you turn on background playback and you close the app, say, to check your email or find a website, maybe look up something that your book is talking about, the book will keep playing in the background. So it's up to you whether you want to leave this setting on or not, but I think it's a really great feature. So once you've configured your audio settings, settings. you can go back and configure visual settings. Visual settings. Visual settings include things like text color, text background color, highlight color, because as we'll see in a moment, the app actually highlights text as you read it. So this makes it fairly neat to customize exactly how your app looks. So if you'd prefer your words to be highlighted in red instead of yellow, you can do that. Last but certainly not least, you can adjust your font size and this will reflect the size of the font that's in your book. Now, obviously, for us who are legally blind, the bigger is better, but do keep in mind that the bigger your font is, the fewer words you'll have on screen, and the more you'll need to scroll. Although, if you're having the app read to you, it will scroll automatically. Okay, so we've got our settings configured just the way we like them. Now it's time to find a book. Now you can browse the latest books. Latest books. Results 1-122. Search. You can browse popular, popular books. books. Results. Results 1-100 of 95,529. Now, I read Gary Paulson's Hatchet in middle school, and it's a great tale of wilderness survival and personal courage, Hatchet. so I'd Gary recommend Paulson. that to anyone. Now, when I tap on the book, I'm presented with a description of it, and handily, a button to download the book. Download started. Please wait. And download just like completed. that, the book has been downloaded. And I can choose to read it right then and now if I'm really excited about the book. 
a penning book. Which I am. Now I'm in the book and you'll notice that my font size that I chose is reflected in the text size here. Now the first couple of pages in a book are copyright material and you'll usually have to scroll through those unless you're really, really interested in that sort of thing. Next usually you'll see the table of contents as I just saw. And finally, we're at chapter one. So I'm gonna tap on chapter one. Now you'll notice that chapter one becomes highlighted. This means that that's where it's gonna start reading. Now I'm gonna let this read for a few lines and I have my voice set pretty fast, but you'll be able to see the words progress as the voice reads. Chapter one. Brian Robeson stared out the window of the small plane at the endless green northern wilderness below. It was a small plane, a Cessna 406 dash a bush plane and the engine was so loud, so roaring and consuming and loud that it ruined any chance for conversation. Not that he had much to say. He was 13 and the only passenger on the plane was a pilot named, what was it? Jim or Jake or something who was in his mid-40s and who had been silent as he worked to prepare for takeoff. So as you saw, the text scrolls as the voice reads the book, and not only does it highlight the sentence yellow, but it also highlights the individual word in a different color. And again, you can change all of that in your settings. On this bar at the bottom of the screen, you can see fast forward and rewind features. At the top, in the upper right corner, there are several more options that you can use. One of them is what looks like several horizontal lines. That's your table of contents. Section. So if you want to go back and read a certain chapter again, you can do so. You can also, within this area, it's a little bit tricky to see, so you may want to use your zoom, but there's a magnifying glass in the upper right-hand corner of this window. Search section. If you tap on that, you can actually search through a section of the book for individual text. So if you know there's a scene involving plane crash, sorry, I didn't mean to spoil that for you, you can search for plane crash. Section. Next up in our upper right settings is a ribbon. And this is a symbol not only in Bookshare, but in most other apps for bookmarking. So if you found a section that either you like a lot or you might need to come back to for a research for a paper. Set bookmark has been completed. You tap the ribbon and as the lovely voice tells us, set bookmark has been completed. Now, last but not least, there's a little gear icon, which as you may remember is a symbol for settings, not just in read to go but in most apps. So if you tap on settings. that, you can actually get to the same settings that we were in earlier to adjust some of the settings on the fly. So you don't have to leave your book to increase the font size a little bit, or if the voice is reading too fast for you, you can slow it down. Now I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Stay tuned for more from East Texas Lighthouse for the Blind. You can like us on Facebook and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.